thank you all for joining us here today to talk about the steps that we are taking uh, to protect our most vulnerable residents against the dangers of exposure to excessive heat. We are joined today by individuals representing the agencies responsible for helping our residents on code red days. Dr. Oxiris Barbeau, representing Bob Maloney of the Office of Emergency um, Management is Scott Broman. Am I getting your last name right? Yeah. Got it. We have Chief Donald Heimbach from the Heimbach from the Fire Department, and uh, Donnie Moses, Detective Moses from the Police Department. Thank you all for being here. Baltimore's multi-agency Code Red Heat Alert initiative has been recognized as a model across America, and I've asked them all to join me here today to share with you our comprehensive plan to prepare people of Baltimore for this year's hot weather. On my calendar, it says the official start of summer begins June the 21st. But clearly, standing up here on this black top uh, podium, we realize that it started a lot earlier this year. Last summer was one of the hottest summers on record. Baltimore had 17 code red days. If this past week is any indication, this summer will be similar. When the weather does, not, does turn hot and humid, uh, and when the heat index is expected to be over 105 degrees, the agencies represented here today have a responsibility to help our citizens stay cool, stay safe, and stay healthy. We especially want to reach out to our seniors and other vulnerable populations who are at most at risk during these heat events. I urge everyone to take hot weather seriously. While it is a great time to enjoy the outside, to enjoy cookouts, to enjoy our ethnic festivals, and all that the city has to offer, um, we should be prepared for the extreme heat. If you must be outside during code red days, please note the following precautions. Dress in loose-fitting, lightweight, and light-colored clothing, and cover as much skin as possible. If you work outside, find some shade and take frequent water breaks. If you don't have air conditioning at home, stay on the lowest floor of your house, out of the sunshine, or consider visiting an air conditioned facility, such as one of our cooling centers. And most importantly, check on your friends and family and neighbors regularly who do not have air conditioning and who spend much of their time alone. This Memorial Day, as we come together with friends and family at picnics and ball games, I urge everyone to stay hydrated and to stay mindful of how you feel while you're out in the sun. Please seek medical assistance if you don't feel well. Listen to your body. There's, if your body is sending you a message, it makes sense to listen to it. Heat-related deaths are pre preventable, and I need everyone in Baltimore to work with us to ensure that all of our residents are safe. Let's work together, let's stay informed so we can all have a healthy summer. Now I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Barbeau, our Commissioner of Health, who will talk more about the city's Code Red plan. Dr. Barbeau. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Heat waves can be silent killers, especially affecting those with limited economic means or with significant chronic illnesses. Nationally, up to 1,200 lives are lost annually due to extreme heat events. This makes heat waves a public health threat. Last year, nine hyperthermia or heat-related deaths were reported for Baltimore. Additionally, 919 individuals entered city emergency departments specifically complaining about heat-related illnesses. Nearly one-third of these patients were 65 or older and most patients were admitted for hospitalization. This tells us that heat-related illness is serious and can be deadly. It also underscores the importance of multi-partner initiatives like Code Red. More than a dozen city agencies and private sector partners collaborate to achieve our goal of protecting our seniors, the medically frail, the homeless, and other populations who are most at risk in extreme heat. As the mayor indicated, Monday's temperature could reach well into the mid-90s and the heat index could make it feel even hotter. We won't know for sure until Sunday morning, but Memorial Day could be our first red, code red day of the year. That's why it's important to get the word out now so people can start preparing for next week. There are some additional precautions citizens should take to keep cool in extreme heat. Invest in a quality fan. 
Circulating air helps to cool the body by increasing the rate of evaporation of sweat of perspiration. Eat well-balanced, light meals, and avoid using salt tablets unless directed to do so by your physician. Drink plenty of water, and we can't stress this enough. Drink plenty of water. Individuals with chronic underlying illnesses such as kidney disease should consult with physicians, but drinking lots of fluids is always a good idea. Limit the intake of alcoholic and caffeinated beverages, and keep a cool, wet cloth handy to cool off your skin. Make sure you know the signs of heat exhaustion, which include nausea, confusion, and heavy sweating. Heat exhaustion can follow, can be followed quickly by heat stroke, so it's essential to get medical care as soon as possible. The symptoms of heat stroke include hot, dry, flushed skin, nausea, and a rapid, excessively rapid or excessively slow heart rate. One of the key signs to look for is individuals who've been previously sweating a lot who then stop sweating. If you suspect someone you know is suffering from this condition, get medical help immediately. Heat stroke can kill. And as I said earlier, stay cool. On Code Red Days, the Community Action Program will open five cooling centers throughout the city from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays and from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekends to provide cooling relief to individuals who may not have air conditioning in their homes. Locations are in the press release. In addition, or you can visit our website at baltimorehealth.org, uh, excuse me, .gov. In addition, Health Department's Office of Aging and Care Services will open six senior centers during Code Red Heat Alert days, and they will be open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays only. All of these centers are air conditioned and will have supply of water for all citizens in need. The list is available, as I said, on our website at baltimorehealth.org forward slash code red info. Residents can also call 311 to be directed to the nearest cooling center. Transportation to and from cooling centers will be available through seniors, for seniors through the CARE Taxi Card Program. Seniors can call 410-644-1123. Mayor's Office of Human Services will coordinate provision of bottled water to people who are homeless and desig at designated locations on code red days, and the Maryland Food Bank provides the water. To find out more about the city's plan, please go to our website, baltimorehealth.org. Now I'd like to introduce Scott Brillman from the Office of Emergency Management. After he speaks, we'll be happy to take any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bravo. Power outages can occur during periods of extreme heat. A loss of power, a loss of air condition, a loss of running water can be extremely dangerous for the young, for the elderly, and for residents with medical problems. If your power goes out, you should immediately call BG&E at 1-877-778-2222. Don't wait for your neighbor to call. Every call will help BG&E get your power back on in your home. We can all take steps to start preparing now for a power outage by getting these essential emergency supplies, a flashlight, extra batteries, an AM FM battery operated radio, and extra water, one gallon per person per day. These emergency supplies will help you and your family get through any emergency. Lastly, stay informed. Listen to your local television and radio stations. Find out what the weather's like. Find out how you can get help. And also find out how you can help your neighbors and your community during days of extreme heat. Uh, next up, Chief Donald Heimbach. Good morning, um, Madam Mayor. Good morning. Um, as far as the fire department is concerned, you know, we, uh, we were part of the city's team that responded to an unprecedented, unprecedented heat wave last year. And we staffed uh, additional EMS resources, additional uh, fire su uh, suppression resources, and we responded well. I think we responded quickly. 
and we handled every emergency that came our way. Uh, in addition to some of the, um, the tips that you heard this morning about dealing with the, uh, the hot weather, I encourage you uh, to take a look at your electrical circuits. Make sure you're not overloading your, uh, your electrical circuits, that you're not using these uh, extension cords, especially under, uh, under carpets and rugs. Uh, they pose a, a real a fire hazard. And keep an eye on the pets in the, in, in the cars. Don't lock your pets in the cars or your children, because we still see uh, deaths from children being locked in cars and uh, pets being locked in cars. So we're going to deal with it. We're going to stay at the fire department as do the other uh, agencies in the city to respond to anything that may come our way. Uh, at this point, I would uh, bring up uh, Detective Donnie Moses from the police department. Good morning, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everyone. As far as the police department is concerned, uh, we definitely play an active role in trying to help people with uh, heat-related emergencies. As you all know, we've been asked to identify the bad guys in the neighborhood. However, officers, or rather now that the warm weather's coming, officers have also been asked to identify some of the senior citizens and vulnerable individuals within the neighborhood. Uh, we have to keep them in mind. They are part of our service-oriented mission. Additionally, no one knows the community like the community members themselves. Having said that, you know your loved ones, you know your neighbors. Many of us have seniors and vulnerable uh, individuals who may be at risk when the temperature rises. Having said that, if you feel or if you think that one of your neighbors or loved ones may be suffering uh, from a heat-related emergency, feel free to dial 311 or 911. Again, checking up on our citizens is a part of our mission as well. Madam Mayor. All right, so again, I want to thank all of my agencies for working together to make sure that we have a safe summer. You know, I know that if we continue to work hard, we can, we can get there, but we have to get the, the message out. So I want to thank the media for being here as well. It, it is important that we all understand what resources are available so we can prevent the prevention the preventable heat-related deaths. I'll open it up for questions. Yes, any these centers are open uh, for any and all individuals who don't have access to air conditioning, who have chronic underlying diseases that could potentially put them at risk for prolonged exposure uh, to heat. And um, the most important thing that we can reemphasize is that individuals um, should take advantage of these centers, but also if um, folks out there in the community have loved ones, uh, they should also encourage them to take part of the services uh, at the centers. There'll be free water.